Every time a GOAT candidate emerges in football, there is always a clamour to pile on the pressure and label promising youngsters as their successor. Pele is considered by most to be the GOAT and was nothing short of footballing royalty. He possessed exceptional speed, agility and balance, and jaw-dropping dribbling skills. He was one of the most prolific forwards of all time. Players coming out of Brazil who were expected to vacate Pele's throne include the likes of Robinho, Neymar and most recently Vinicius Jr. Zidane is, for me, the greatest player of all time. The way he could manipulate the ball on the space around him was nothing short of genius, of pure artistry. When players emerged with a wonderful touch and nonchalant dribbling style, they were often saddled with the new Zidane label. This long list includes Samir Nasri, Adel Tarabt, and just this year, Jude Bellingham has emerged as the latest candidate to fill Zizou's boots. For many people though, the GOAT debate tends to come down to a toss-up between Pele and Maradona. The quintessential number 10, his sublime vision, creativity and dribbling mark him as the best playmaker in history. New DA Diego or new Maradona became a thing, with press and public alike slapping it on promising Argentines such as Juan Román Roquelme, Sergio Aguero and Paulo Dybala. However, there is one player who was marked out as the next Maradona who managed to transcend that moniker and forge his own path in football, staking an irresistible claim to be considered the GOAT in his own right. Lionel Messi, just like the legends before him, has spawned a whole army of mini-me's. Any small and outrageously skillful youngster has been dubbed the new Messi. We've had Bojan Kerkic the Spanish Messi, Alan Halilovic, the Croatian Messi, and now Arda Guler, the Turkish Messi. And way back at the start of the 2010s, we had the subject of today's video, Ryan Gold, the Scottish Messi. Ryan Gold was born in Aberdeen on the 16th of December 1995 and grew up in the small Scottish town of Lawrence Kirk. He joined Dundee United's Youth Academy at the age of 9 after starting his football training at Brecon City Boys Club. Here, he came under the wing of coach Ian Cathro, who placed an emphasis on ball skills and for Gold to develop his awareness and game intelligence and to always be thinking two or three steps ahead. For head of youth development at Dundee, Stevie Campbell, the penny really dropped that the kid was something special in a match against Hearts under-19s. He threw the 15-year-old Gold into the fray, who proceeded to score two goals almost immediately, the second of which was pure box office, sticking it into the back of the net following a slaloming dribble. My jaw literally dropped. It was one of those oh my god moments when you realise you had a special talent on your hands. We lost 4-2, but everyone wanted to talk about gold that day. His first team debut came not long after, as he came on for the final 3 minutes of the 2-0 win over Motherwell at Fir Park on the last day of the 11-12 season. Dundee took their time fully integrating him into the first team squad, and it wasn't until the business end of the 12-13 campaign that he got a real run in the side. At the age of 17, he made his first start for the club against St Johnston, and latched onto Mark Miller's through ball to prod the opener into the bottom corner and score his first Dundee United goal. As a reward, he got to keep his place in the starting lineup in the following match against Aberdeen, a must-win fixture in that season's race for the top six. Gold lit up Tannadice with his flicks, dribbling, energetic running, forward-thinking passing and confidence to take long-range shots as his team won 1-0. The next match was the biggest of his short career so far, the Scottish Cup semi-final against Celtic, and he was once more in from the kickoff. After a stunning Chris Commons opener, Gold played a beautiful 1-2 with Gary Mackay-Steven who finished off a devastating Dundee counter-attack. It was a thrilling and pulsating encounter, but ultimately Dundee hearts were broken by an Anthony Stokes winner in extra time to give Celtic a hard-fought 4-3 win. Those highly impressive end-of-season showings have been enough to convince manager Jackie McNamara that the precocious youngster was ready for the first team, and after making four appearances off the bench in the first five matches of the 13-14 season, Gold more or less became a mainstay. A natural lefty, he could play anywhere behind the striker, but was most commonly deployed on the right or down the centre as a number 10. Wherever he played, he was electric for the first half of the season, and up until the new year, he had 6 goals and 11 assists in all competitions, with notable highlights including a lovely low-angled strike against Ross County and a cracking volley against Motherwell. It was a home game against Partick Thistle that really made everyone sit up and take notice though, as a 17-year-old Gold belied his tender age and pulled the strings from the middle of the park, orchestrating proceedings and assisting every single one of United's 4 goals. Dundee were a team bursting with exciting young Scottish talent that season, boasting the likes of Andrew Robertson, John Suter, Gary Mackay Steven and Stuart Armstrong. Yet it was the silky skills of Speedster Gold which had garnered most of the press attention as he was the name on everyone's lips and the most promising talent in Scottish football. The media had gotten hold of the fact that he was known as Mini Messi or Baby Messi amongst his teammates and they really ran with this. What impressed me most about Ryan is how mature he was for his age and how he managed to keep his feet firmly on the ground amidst the kind of 
insane hype that would have inflated anyone's head. The comparison to Messi is quite laughable. It is good to read. I just don't think about it too much. I don't think anyone will ever be like Messi. The stuff he can do with the ball is a joke. I just wonder how he does the things he does. It goes through your head to try it and then you say nah, I'm not good enough. Despite a dip in his own form after the festive period, Dundee finished 4th in the league. They also made it to the finals of the Scottish Cup, with the highlight of that run being the 3-1 defeat of Rangers in the semis, and Gold had a major part to play in the second goal, leaving 3 defenders for dead with a skillful dart into the box, cutting it back to Armstrong who scuffed it to Mackay Stephen who saw his deflected strike loop into the goal. Gold started the final on the bench and his team were 1-0 down when he was sent for in the 65th minute. He was unable to inspire a comeback and Stephen McLean ensured the trophy was heading back to Perth, making it 2-0 5 minutes from time. Despite signing an extension to his deal in December which tied into the club till 2017, nobody expected him to see that out. There were some who believed that moving on in the summer of 2014 after his breakout season and only one year of sustained first team football was too soon and he would be better served continuing his development at Tannadice for at least another year. Gold had other ideas and despite concrete interest from several big clubs south of the border, he ended up signing with Portuguese giant Sporting Lisbon on a six year deal for a fee in the region of £3 million. A £60 million Euro release clause proved the club believed they had pulled off a massive coup in snapping up one of the hottest talents in football. Gold cited the slower pace of the game as being better suited to smaller players like him and pointed to his new club's development of footballing greats such as Luis Figo and Cristiano Ronaldo as reasons for making the move. Really though, I think he wanted to escape the extreme levels of media interest and expectation that he had been subjected to in Scotland. I'm really glad that I'm away from the hype which surrounded me. I'd only played a few games for United when there were rumours and stories about other clubs being interested. It didn't affect me, but it was beyond belief it was happening after just a couple of games. He would later reveal in 2019 that the mini Messi label was much harder to shake. If they saw me walking about in Lisbon or in a shopping centre, sporting fans who wanted a photo or something, they'd shout mini Messi, mini Messi. They wouldn't shout Ryan. I did not enjoy it and it's not something I welcomed. Gold pretty much spent his whole first season in the B team, but manager Mark Marco Silva showed that he had the youngster in his mind by starting him in League Cup games where he impressed, scoring twice and assisting once in three matches. Those appearances and two as a sub in Liga Nos which totaled 48 minutes would be the only ones he would make for the senior squad. Because unfortunately, Silva was replaced by Jorge Jesus who clearly didn't fancy the young Scott, not including him in a single first team matchday squad as he made 38 appearances scoring 5 goals for the B team across the 15-16 season. He then went on four unproductive loans, including a final one to Hebs back in Scotland which was cut short by injury as his development started to falter, his career began to stagnate and any suggestions of comparing him to Messi now seemed obscene. In 2019, at the age of 23, with one year left on his contract, his ill-fated time at Sporting was up. Deciding he wanted to prove that he had what it took to make it in Portugal, he remained in the country, but dropped down a division, joining second tier side Farench, who he had previously spent time on loan with. It turned out to be a great decision as the move breathed fresh life into his stalling career. In a season curtailed by the pandemic, Gold, now playing as a left midfielder, established himself as the main creative force for his new team, enjoying his highest ever goals tally and becoming their top goal scorer with 9. Gold was instrumental in securing Ferenc their first promotion back to the top flight in 18 years and was recognised as the Liga Pro's player of the season. He continued to prove that those years bouncing around various clubs in Portugal hadn't been wasted, but had been taken as an opportunity to get his head down and work on his game, as he was once more his team's top scorer and one of the standout players in the whole Premier Liga, bagging 9 goals and 7 assists. Unfortunately, he was unable to stop Varenche's immediate relegation. This demotion nullified an extension clause in his contract, making him a free agent in the summer of 2021, and after 2 years of fine form in the Algarve, his star was on the rise again and he was once more a man in demand. As many as 30 clubs were said to be chasing his signature, including the old firm. In keeping with his career up to that point, Gold took the path less travelled and signed with Canadian club Vancouver Whitecaps in the MLS. And here it would seem he has finally found a home. His impact on them has been astonishing. They had won just two of their opening 12 games before he arrived, with seven of those being losses. After his debut, they went on a nine game unbeaten run as they finished sixth in the Western Conference. A well loved and well respected figure at the club, he is now a complete midfielder arguably the Whitecaps best player and has scored 26 and assisted
completed 29 in 93 appearances. His biggest impact has undoubtedly been in the Canadian Championship, where he has helped the Whitecaps win the trophy twice in a row, even scoring the winner in this year's final against Montreal. He was awarded the George Gross Memorial Trophy in 2022, which is given to the tournament's MVP. Although Ryan Gold represented Scotland at under-19 and under-21 level and received a call-up to the senior squad in 2014, he is yet to be capped. After his resurgence at Ferenc and now continued superb form in the MLS, many of the Tartan army are clamouring to see him be given a shot in the national team. However, he remains a forgotten man and it seems while playing in Canada, he is very much out of sight and out of the mind of Steve Clark. As we have seen, labelling small players with a low centre of gravity and outrageous dribbling skills as the next Messi while they are still in their teens never ends well. I believe this crazy amount of pressure, coupled with the insane spotlight and speculation put on him by a Scottish media starved for years of genuinely world class looking young talents led him to make the wrong move at the wrong time. If things had been calmer and more normal in Scotland then I think he would have stayed at Dundee for another year and then assessed his options, which I believe would have been the right move for him. Instead, he joined a team which realistically he was going to have a very hard time breaking into as they boasted a midfield three of William Carvalho, João Mario and Adrian Silva. Heck, even the B team was bursting with homegrown talent like Daniel Podence and Gelson Martins. But all credit to Ryan, he didn't allow the disappointment of being overlooked and tossed aside by Sporting to ruin his career. Instead, he made a couple of smart decisions in terms of which club to move to and did his talking on the pitch, reminding everyone why he was once one of the most exciting and talked about young stars of football. Still only 27, he has more than enough time to further prove himself in one of the top three leagues if that is what he chooses to do. 